Thank, thanking, thanking Stacy, who actually prompted me. Thank you for your help with administration. Yeah, so, okay, we're at May 18th. Our, uh, we're in week six of our opening six week cycle. And I was just uh, just reflecting uh, before I was reminding to record that we're, uh, we kind of set out to do a little six week experiment and to, to see what it would be like to see if we could organize, figure out how to start learning how to organize ourselves around the one thing that's bigger than us all that we're here in service of. and what it would look like if we could start to see our unique skill sets and personalities and projects and organizations as um, as all arising from what's trying to emerge and see how we could begin to think about starting to coordinate and help one another and perhaps accomplish together what what none of the individual networks or organizations could accomplish in isolation so I'm very intentionally showing up today with, uh, with no agenda other than just to try to be present and to foster the deepest you know, dialogue and reflection and learning that we can. Um, we had a practice, the same kind of practice in our uh, construction businesses that anytime we did a project, even anytime we did a proposal, we'd do our best to do a, an after action review, we called it, um, but to uh, basically just look back and learn on what went right what didn't go right what can we what can we learn what we, what can we do better are we on the right track so it's kind of a, a navigation and continuous improvement exercise um, so i'm thinking that um we'll, we'll probably do a few breakout rooms uh today and have some space for some more intimate dialogue and in, in small groups and then maybe come back together and and share those um, and i wanted to maybe start with the first breakout group um, being a reflection on on value. Um, so uh, Kilu, who did our opening little reflection, is uh, is an innovation funder, and so she's constantly dealing with teams coming through, looking for innovation funding and scientific and research and startup spaces. Um, so she's been really uh, really thinking through and advocating the last couple of weeks that we try to figure out what it is that's the value that we're doing and how do we notice that as it's arising. Um, so Kilo, uh, before our first breakout group, would you like to uh, share a couple of minutes of reflection or a few minutes, whatever you feel on your thoughts around value and noticing that as it arises? Sure, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I mean, it's part of the professional cretinism of someone, right, who, who funds startups and sort of growing companies sort of that fight it just in San Diego and that just tends to happen when I when I get on on my mic. Um and maybe we'll take a moment. And in the in the work of looking at companies to fund you're always evaluating what is the value there. And so it's the technology or it's the project, but it's also the growth potential. It's also the people. It's the quality of leadership. It's the quality of, you know, markets and customers and so on. And it's in some ways also, we don't talk about it so much, but it's what it feels like to, to be there. But there's so many other different aspects of value. And from the funder potential, funder perspective, you know, we look at value as something that gets built. So you build a business, business creates value, that value gets recognized by someone, and then they pay you for the value you created. So if I make something that you want for your business to build value for your customers, you pay me for the value I created. And then your customer pays you for the value that you created. And so from that business-like perspective of value, Part of the conversation I think that is useful for us to have, especially at these early stages, is what kinds of value has already been created? Because actually a lot of value has been created just in the last five weeks. Number, a bunch of that is intangible. If it's intangible, we think it's not measurable, but it's actually measurable. And so if we list it out, if we name it, it becomes countable, recognizable, measurable. And when it becomes spoken out and countable, recognizable, and measurable, 
then it's easier to recognize. And then it's easier for us to also, as a meta project, wherever it goes, to um, in some ways transact with it. Maybe to get funding for projects, maybe to get recognition, maybe to have more weight behind introduction and recognition of the quality and so on. And so some of the intangible aspects of value that have been created and of the intangibles for, for others is just the ask itself to bring together a group of these high achieving, rich, diverse individuals with these different networks at our fingertips, that alone is of value. And then the vision that it's possible to do something in the world and it's possible to do something here and now through conversations and converging these types of people in conversations that then translate into actions in our own respective lanes as well as somehow together, that is a value that wasn't there that now is there. And some of those conversations and the kind of value that is created cannot happen one-on-one -on -one or within one conversation within one organization or even within you know, two organizations talking to each other. It's unique to this kind of an environment and this kind of an ecosystem. So the ecosystem itself has value. The convening of it has value. The ask has value. The vision that it can be done and something valuable can happen has value. The recognition that something is happening in different places in the world that is some form of a movement or some form of an endeavor when acted upon has value. The space in which we can speak and listen has value. The way that space is held has value. Our agreement to be civil and to go sort of, you know, up and down and be authentic and real and whole and show up the way we do has value. The felt sense, the felt experience of something special happening here has value, as well as the whatever it is that creates that magic invites the space and holds it. And also people's engagement has value. It's, it's not a world where a lot of people are engaged or engaged. And then that's all even behind any threads that have emerged and any themes and any actions and any dialogues that have happened now since the meta project started between the participants on the outside of it, all of these. And I haven't even gotten to the systems and the projects and the communications and the groups talking and the, you know, Mattermost channels and the catalysts and the mirror boards and and more things and the more kind of thought through systems and the under underlying potential resources and structures that I don't know very much about, but that have, you know, been created based on a lot of work and engagement as well. Those are all just the beginnings of pointers of directions of value that's already here. Five weeks, six weeks now to talk. So Jordan, maybe that's, that's where I'll leave it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kila. So, yeah, thank you. So just on that, I'm going to um, set up some breakout rooms with four to five people each just for uh, for a discussion on on following that. So Kila just kind of top of mind, um, you know, listed some of the value that she's seen that has been created from her lens. So I just invite us to, to split out and make breakout rooms, um, probably leave like maybe 10 minutes or so for this, if that feels about right, um, just for just for dialogue on on what value we think has been created. Um, encourage one person in the note in the group maybe to be a note taker um, so that we can kind of copy and paste these things back into the chat threads and um, when we come back so we can gather these up. So we'll do some value harvesting. So I'm gonna form these breakout rooms now. Hope you enjoy your time together. All right, we will, what do you think? Uh, Wendy, Wendy McLean, are you there? Is, yes. is three or four participants per room or four to five participants per room better? <laughs> I think for the time, probably three to four. Three to four, all right, beautiful. We'll see you guys soon.
Jordan, I got a bit of an issue since I'm in two places. Uh-oh.
the schwoof feeling. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. All right, I'll take uh take... just a reminder to people that you may want to mute again, right? Just because we all were unmuted in the breakout rooms. That's thanks. Let's just take uh let's take a couple minutes just for anybody um, while it's fresh in our minds just to write anything into the chat that uh, came out. Let's just take a couple minutes just to do a little group note taking and it'll help our sense makers and harvesters after this call. We'll have a little verbal dialogue. Okay, well, anybody continues to write anything into the chat? Um, any, anybody have anything particularly alive that emerged that you'd like to share? Jonathan? Um, the warmth and welcome quality that I think all of us seem to broadcast. Um, you know, we all have ideas and we all want to put them out and there's this listening and receptivity that's um, kind of the bedrock of accomplishing something like uh, collective intelligence and uh, the meta project. We had a really rich discussion around power and different forms of power and the ability to model um, that in our own lived worlds and the impact that could have on other people. And I really liked Michael's contribution of power under. So that's noticing the power that somebody else has and raising that. And then we went to the direction of how that could um help creativity enter the world because it means the people who would not normally be listened to can then contribute in a way that um would often not happen so creativity and and not only females that creative people in general are not necessarily able to participate fully because they get squished by other forms of power Wendy. Yeah, such a such a powerful concept that maybe together we can forge like infrastructure and platforms that lift up each other's diversity and unique expression as opposed to top-down things or umbrellas or things that oppress. In our group, uh, we talked uh, about connection and creating environments where people do things because uh, the connection is important, uh, finding each other is important, and resonating with their own personal values. Uh, so we also talked about something that's valuable because it 
has value because it resonates with personal values, because it resonates with the environment around you, because it takes money out of the equation, because it does something where people want to come for more, whether there's any real exchange in it or just people understanding that they get something. Thanks, Hank. Um, <clears throat> something that seemed to resonate in our group is this sense of optimism being created collectively. That it 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 lift it it comes from underneath and lifts us all up. Yeah, I wanted to voice two things that were hard to put in the chat. One was a feeling of um, that the things that I am working on as an individual and the things that are giving my life meaning and purpose before I ever joined Meta are aligned with Meta. <laughs> so with this Meta project and what it's trying to do. And so it just, even though I know uh, we're still figuring things out, it feels so much like this interplay between the work that I, the work and effort I put towards Meta ends up, I know it's an investment of time and energy. I don't know yet exactly how it might feed me, but I'm trusting that it will feed me because things are so aligned. And so I've been volunteering for so many years that I have learned this interplay that I hadn't really articulated until I came to Meta Project for myself, where this, um, I realized that I would contribute I almost always get, I've gotten good at knowing those organizations where I will get feed, you know, get the investment back. Um, I'll get dividends, I guess, on my investment um, towards the things that I'm working on. And if that stops happening, that's the clue to me that over extended period of time, that it's time for me to go off and continue doing my thing outside of that project, that particular project. So it's just in, to me, that's an interesting piece. And it's, it's the strongest thing that keeps me coming back to this. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is uh, we also talked about um, our conversation kind of converged on this need for facilitators too. facilitators who are really good at creating space, these spaces and how as we grow, we value this so much in the spaces that have already been created in Meta Project that we, we felt, I felt strongly about the need to recreate that as we, you know, to fractal that out with people who are who that's there, that's where their brilliance lives, right? This in doing, creating space like that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Wendy. Kilo? We also spoke of Derek and Jonathan and I think Andreas Otter. We also spoke about the felt experience, the viscerally felt experience of the space that energizes us all and how that itself is a valuable, valuable reason to come back or be there and how it becomes a kind of a coherent collective sensing field or a tool for collective sensing and engagement when we cohere with each other in that way that we feel in our physiology. We feel that something great is happening and we feel sort of excited and inspired and optimism is one of the tools, but there are probably others and we just have that feeling and that feeling itself is something that is not present in many places but when it is there's this generative creative inspired insightful rich experience and we as a collective then engage in a practice of what can be created in this rich diversity like it's an it's an experience thing that becomes in some way self-amplifying and contagious as well as magnetic and inviting. And it's, it's sort of intangible, but it's real in the sense that it's very much an experience-based, self-sense-based thing. That regardless of context, I mean, not regardless, somebody could take it down and it could probably break down in different ways too. And it'd be interesting to see what breaks it down and how do you restore it. 
but it's real enough that we can feel it. We know it when it's there and we know it when it's missing. Excuse me. Eric? Um, yeah, what I named as well, like for, for me, it's not so easy to find out what is unique about this group. There is similar kind of group doing similar kind of things. And to be honest, really to that sense of, okay, what's unique here? How do I compare it to other groups that I've been part of? And one of those parts is the maturity that I can feel in the whole of the group. There's so much maturity in having gone through. There's not this, this like wild sense of idealism. Uh, even if idealism is also present here, it's not what, what drives the whole narrative the whole time. It's a lot of people that can also really be critical at each other. Uh, and like for me, the fundamental thing about philosophy is really finding our truth by being critical and being skeptical. And at the same time, being so open and experiential and hopeful and connected to these senses of what's bigger than us. I think this is a, this is a beautiful combination. And uh, that's an example of what's unique about this group. Eric. Anyone else have anything alive in that field to share? Um, there's this uh, pragmatic uh, realization that if we can measure what we're doing and then visualize it, um, it helps us see where our momentum is taking us and also see where momentum is missing. And I, I think that desire to measure ourselves is really strong in this group. Um, and very, from my point of view, it's, it's, it's highly needed and useful and wonderful. Beautiful. So with that on um, measurement and the ability to see, nobody has else has anything uh, pressing. Wendy McLean and I'm not sure Vincent's still on, but um, Wendy, would you like to share a little update on what's happening with the map weaving group and some of the things that's been created there? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. I'll invite um, Pete to um, jump in too, or other members of Map Weavers to jump in. So we kind of created, I don't know, maybe it's about three, four weeks ago now, we actually created a separate sovereign called Map Weavers um, to work on the ideas around mapping people and projects primarily, but of course it's fractaled out, It'd be a lot of things. <laughs> and um, We've had really some very great iterative calls. We use the calls primarily to um, just discuss our concerns, our hopes, our needs, our issues uh, around mapping. It's some of interoperability, it's some of visualizations, it's some of um, what we'd like to see in the distant future and some of what we need, we wish we could have tomorrow. And in the process, we have created quite a few really great gems and starts to maps and a really good air table. Uh, for us, we're using Meta as kind of an experimental space, right, to test out some of these things we've, we've been working on on our own for long periods of time, or that together seem important for Meta. So Meta is our experimental space. Um, and that Pete put in our, into chat, our, um, our group page on Catalyst, and I'm going to put into chat our summary document that I just put together yesterday so that anyone who's interested, I also put it in Mattermost, anyone who's interested in seeing um, what we're up to, you can kind of see there and we have tons of links out to everything that we've done so far. So that's kind of the master document. The group page is also a really great spot as a master spot to go see what we're doing. A lot of links exist there too. Um, I'm happy to show things, but I think that gives a good overview and I'm open to questions or to other members of the group adding.
Is there anything you'd like to show, Wendy? There is, uh, looks like there was a couple of neat visualizations that, sure. that you guys have done. Yeah, sure. We'll just take a couple of minutes and yeah, a couple of things that are starting to rise. Time, yeah. You see, I closed a bunch of stuff, so let me open back up again, and then I'll start sharing. So, we first of all, we created an Airtable base, but I know for a lot of people outside of Map Weavers, that's not as exciting. <laughs> so, um, some of the things that have come together as visualizations, let me open up this one first, are um, mapped from the same set of data. So if some of you remember a couple of weeks ago, we were doing a two minute project summary, right? People were invited to come forward and speak of their things for two minutes. And that created a rich database of information. And I will share. Oh, can you enable screen sharing? Please, Jordan. Yes. And thank you, Pete, for the map weavers link to Mattermost too. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that works. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show you is a Kumu graph. So you're not gonna be able to see the text on this. I'm sorry, we haven't, we haven't gone through all the, all the, um, the little design changes to make the text visible, but I will do my best to kind of zoom in and walk you through it. So basically this is just a beginning, right? Of us being able to pin, to, to start to see how the meta, what's linked to the meta project. So meta project is in the middle, right? And going back out again, all the red are my, you know, we chose to organize things, or I was suggesting to the group, we organize things by the societal sectors. Those are in red. It's really just a, a framework that we can start to see things. And the reason why that's so helpful is because you can see some of them are empty, right? Like media and things like that. Some of them have a couple projects connected. The projects are in yellow. So here under economics, we had a couple, you know, people do some stuff talking about Gitcoin, talking about neighborhood economics and the good country index, right? So I did the sense making of attaching sectors and things. So some of you may be listening to that and going, that's in the wrong place. And that's okay. That's part of this process is figuring this out together. Um, but in the meantime, we were just trying to map some things. And so we may have put them in the wrong categories um, and that's okay. We'll edit them as we go along. Um, and so this is just a start, right? Green is concepts, yellow are projects, people are in blue, and this is just the beginning. So that's one. I'm gonna stop the share and bring you, oh, maybe I have it up. Hold on one second. Let me drag my screen down. Okay, yeah. I'm looking for the other one. Nope, okay, hold on, let me stop screen sharing and let me bring up the other one, which is the tapestry. Um, which is brand new as of this morning. Bring that one up. There we go. Should load, there it goes. Okay. So this is the same information again. I will share this one. And so here you see the same information, but now we've put the projects, the resources, the topics across the top and the sectors down the side. So you can start to see where things have been shared, right? And in which sectors they've been shared in. So here was Stronger Together, right? And so a little bit of information about that. So you can start to see the synergies and then you can start to see the gaps where things are missing and where things maybe could be added. Obviously we weren't, as we were inviting people to do two minute shares, we weren't expecting that people were going, we're trying to fill in a whole map. So obviously this is just the beginning and not meant to be complete, um, but it's a good starting point. It also, once we fill in more, the, the part of the benefit of the tapestry is this can, is, um, can have a live refresh. So if you go to edit, edit the information that you have, um, we, we can now provide an external editor for people to edit the information. And then this would have a live refresh. Kumu works a little bit differently, but this would be a live refresh. So you could add things or change things and then it would move them where they appear or the details that, that appear inside the, the little card here um, so that we can start to connect with each other. It can start to be a place where we see 
um, where the synergies are as a group, where the gaps are, what's missing, and how we can uh, start to fill things in. So if one of the emerging topics happens to be in governance, right? Right now there's nothing. I know there's things in this group that are around governance. First, we would fill out the repository of what we know, and then we go looking for the things that we don't know. The side could be dynamic. It doesn't have to be the wheel of co-creation sectors here. It could be something else. The top can also be dynamic. So as we expand this out to other things, um, we'll just add columns or um, start to filter, add resources um, or um, tagging and all sorts. This, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks, Wendy. Beautiful. Just a, just a couple other, other things to highlight. Um, uh, Pete and I think uh, Bill Anderson and others are working on um, an emerging massive wiki that um, I think we have our first call on maybe Friday um, that'll start to create uh, directories and repositories of all this that will also tie into these mapping um, efforts. Vincent um, couldn't be here today has taken all our calls, um, put those on Catalyst in a repository that includes all the, the links that are cited in the chats and a bunch of things. As Wendy's saying, um, the, the Mapweavers team is working on the back end to also take those chats and process. Wendy Alfred, I think, has some, some cool things coming up as well. So there's a whole bunch of kind of emerging things that you wouldn't see from these Wendy, Wednesday calls, but I think will start to become apparent. So. Uh, yeah, and I just want to add one more thing. Some really great work was done too as a little subgroup. I'm going to toss toss this at Pete a little bit if he wants to say something about open loops. I think a lot of people were feeling like there was a lot of open open things, right? And so that's starting to get cataloged as well. Tasks and needs and open loops and um, issues, questions, all those kinds of things have been captured. And we're trying to buy, provide a place for them to be put so they don't get lost. So that we feel like when we toss something in to the soup pot that it does. It doesn't just disappear into, into a black hole, that it actually gets held and becomes something rich for either yourself later or for the group or, you know, for other people. So that's being worked on as well. Uh, thanks, Wendy. Um, uh, just to mention, uh, we, there's a there's an air table. I, it's probably not worth showing because it's, it's still really uh, early, but um, wanted to if, if you're a kind of person who's interested in, uh, you know, keeping track of things uh, like like issues, uh, issue trackers or ticketing systems um, or uh, idea databases, things like that, uh, you probably want to join us over in Mapweavers and uh, and join our efforts there. Thanks. If you happen not to be very technically savvy. <laughs> Like I am, and you're more interested in the visualizations and how that speaks to people and what, how that increases community engagement. Map Weavers is also a good spot. Thanks. Okay. I, I would like to have a quick check because I've been part of the groups and I wonder those that haven't been part of it, do you have an imagination of what's there, what we've been talking about? Does a picture form in your head or, or not? Yeah. Some, somebody who doesn't get that, who's still a bit in like, ooh, what are we looking at? I'm a little intimidated by anything that feels like technology. Hi, okay. So it might be helpful to one day show you around and what, what it, what's there and to really get to the sense of meaning that it has instead of yeah. just all the Eric. futures and the bells and whistles. <laughs> Yeah, Eric, that would be really cool. I wonder, I wonder if you could create even just like a little 10 minute loom video or something just to kind of walk, walk the group through and post that out or something. It'd be, be cool because I bet most people can't, uh, we'll put, if they haven't we'll seen it, in, it. We'll put it in the issue tracker. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, <laughs> yeah, one of the tasks we've talked about in Map Weavers is doing tours. We kind of all agreed, like when you have finally have a thing that's that you're ready for the wider group to engage in bringing that into a meeting and doing, doing a bit of a tour so that people understand what it is and how to use it and what the value is. So, yeah. Is that along the lines of what you guys were thinking? It seems like there's a wealth of knowledge and information being collected and it's very obvious by all the work that you guys just show. It's like lots, right? There are a lot of connections, but I feel like maybe the activation of it would be just, you know, to have a, a project, right? Where 
co-creators can come together because that will make it come alive, right? Otherwise, you know, it's process, right? So, yeah. so to for all that wealth of knowledge and all the people behind it, you know, to come through, right? So it's it's more than right, just the you know the, the information, right? It's you know the people behind it. So then it 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 becomes alive. Yeah, that's been a that's been a strong theme, um, Lisa. That at the same time that we're recognizing kind of the total set that we start exercising the group muscles to see what we could actually do together yes. in each of these cycles. So we'll probably do that in, in this next six week cycle is we'll, we'll maybe pick uh, two or three really tangible things and yeah. see if via all this array of sovereigns, we can actually get it done together. And then we can start to push ourselves a little over time and see how competent we can become in lifting up the things that need to be lifted up. So. Yeah, can I can I just offer up because this totally excites me. <laughs> that yeah, the, please, please. To me, that's what that's what tapestry in my mind in its fullest form provides kind of two opportunities, right? One is for the individual to see not only see themselves in the community, but see where the synergies potentially are with what they have inside the community so that they can take action towards being engaged. And it provides the community leaders or the sense makers or the weavers or the meta view to see what's available and go, hey, wait a minute, stuff's emerging in this these particular areas and let's harness that for this particular experiment or towards this particular topic or convene a meeting with these people so that they can work on that particular thing. And I think that's what I'm hearing and what you're saying, Lisa. Yeah, so it's like the maps are just the beginning. <laughs> like it's really, yeah, it's what, yeah. what do they allow us to do? Yeah. Thanks, Wendy. Um, um, maybe yeah, plus one on that one. I, I'm, I'm personally up for the richer data, the feedback, at, and I think it was partly because of what turned up in one of the advisory groups before this meeting is the fact we're actually now starting to have some discussions where there's real tension between people's different views on things. Um, so that will be interesting because that will be outwards facing, but also when those challenges turn up, what can we learn quickly? So to me, again, um, what Lisa just said underscored the opportunity, I think, in these next six weeks to really start working with the um, actual stories of, of people's deeper values that are in conflict and to see how well our group can nurture each person who says those things and um, maintain the conversation. Um, so, yes, I'm after data from that, not just one person holding me up while I have that difficult conversation, but to know whether I'm capable of doing that in other places, which would be story, stories I would share about my lived experience. So inwards towards us, stories inwards towards us, stories of us outwards towards other people, and whether other people can watch those conversations and help me have them in ways that would grow, raise what we're doing. So the story right. data, I think in the next phase, is going to be really critical and beyond that, but I'd like to experiment a little bit with this group because I think we're ready for it now. Perfect. Yeah, Wendy, I'd invite a conversation. Maybe we could have a little design session on that um, with a few of us to, to talk about how we can weave that story data through the next the next cycle. Oh, I would deeply appreciate it. I think yeah. um, the timing is right and we would lose our course from a navigation perspective if we don't have that because once other people come into the conversation, we need to know that we at least held up the bit of sky we could in that conversation, because there's a lot of sky to hold up and we will become very fra fractionated. That's not the right word. If we want to be fractal, we can also fall apart on, on this exact issue. Yeah, so, maybe, maybe, maybe Wendy and Wendy, if you're uh, interested, maybe you guys could anchor a little conversation with a few of us to, to see how we could carry yeah, that through. I, uh, I think, I think Michael's actually important here, although I think he's busy beautiful. at the moment. I'm inviting Michael. <laughs> we'll include him. All right. If, yeah, if we can find space for Michael, because it's something about messaging to ourselves and messaging for other people and getting that messaging right will depend on how good we are at holding a brave space around things that we could just otherwise argue about. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Wendy. Keila? Sorry, just in time for another fight. It's, it's like really the last one was the last time I spoke. <laughs> That's okay, we can hear you okay. Okay, good. So so a couple of things. I, 
No, by now it's a couple of things. So first was the notion of if I wanted to find something out or, or like a specific example, I'd love to learn more about Bill Larson, what you spoke about, the uh, framework that you and Jordan have worked on over time. How would I go about finding out about something like that that may be useful for a group or maybe just a one-on-one -on -one conversation? Like, do we have sort of a process for that? And then if the I second can, thing... If it, I can pop in yeah. on that real quick, Kilu. Uh, yeah. A good way to do that would be either in Lionsburg Town Square or Lionsburg mm -hmm. Request for Guidance. Just say at... Uh, uh, Bill Larson, I forget near uh, uh, his handle, but you, you at him and say, I'd like to talk to you about, and just ask, uh, ask in, in public. I think, I, and I'm not just encouraging that for Kilo. I, all of us should do that. Yeah. Hey, uh, Lisa, I think you're doing something cool. Could you, could we start, start, uh, start a conversation? Um, start at least a little bit in public and then maybe you'll go to email mm -hmm. or maybe you'll go to direct messages or things like that but get the conversation going where other people can see it and um just like uh just like julie said in chat here you know hey wendy e i'm interested in that messaging conversation you know uh, we can do that in mattermost um where it's persistent and where everybody will see it over time mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to wait for a meeting like this to do it and we don't have to you know wait for Bill to say, you know, I'm going to talk about my stuff. Just ask. I think the, the other great modeling we had there was um, Sophia and, and Wendy and others have created little little videos. So like if Kilo, if you ask that question on Matterbus, like, hey, there's this thing that I think would be important to learn about. I think also we could challenge Bill to respond publicly, maybe to create a little video or something and and to put that out so that it's it's there. And then whoever wanted to have a follow-up conversation could. So um, Bill, yeah. Bill, maybe you're willing to accept that challenge to uh, put together. I, I can help you with it too. We could do a little Zoom interview or something and put together something. Okay, yeah. thanks, Keila. What is? She, she had one more. To Sorry to second? jump in, Keila. Yeah, please. Yeah, no, that, 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 that was great. And, and and by the way, having that matter most and having that process of keeping these conversations visible and having the community engage, that too is another value or another valuable. And so just, just to point that out. But the other question is, and it's kind of inarticulate because it's inarticulately in my head, but Wendy was talking about conversations, Wendy, Wendy Alford was talking about conversations becoming more real and sort of the tension and in practice finding out where we are and how we handle things and including you know, conflict and disagreements arising and the richness of that because that's where we discover where the edge is and where the next growth is. And I, I don't even know how to phrase the question, but basically I'm holding a vision that unlike how we do it in the world right now, where the practice is to include and exclude based on preference and agreement, and in some ways alignment, would there be value in us practicing and learning? And it's a leading question. And I don't know how else to ask it. Would there be value in us practicing every time we see a automatically arising conditioned response of excluding instead finding where is that space where maybe we step take a step above or a step behind or wherever it is a step away into distance where we see kind of the unity where it's all already included because in reality reality doesn't exclude anything right i mean eric you gave an example and we talk about nature but you know people kill and get killed and eaten and all of that is there too and that's not exactly a direct parallel but it's a little bit like that where we have our concept of how we hold reality and then there's a bigger reality itself and how can we practice inclusion and unity as a practically exercise thing not just a nice concept and the value to hold and so it's not easy to do. And to a different conversation, you know, perhaps I don't still want to include something that's going to break up the container or something that's pure evil and, you know, whatever, right? Like maybe there are limits. But if there is a common shared goal, I can, imagine, I can envision there are five organizations working towards a goal and two of them don't get along and the third one thinks the two are idiots 
And, you know, the other two sort of don't know about the other ones and don't much care, right? Like that's on the ground view. But then if you go a little bit further, you say, yeah, there are these five people. They're working towards the same goal, solving the same problem. And they are, in a way, a unit or a movement or a subsection. And there probably is a way to include that. So that include, exclude versus practice how to be in a way that we're being well with what is as it is. On one hand, in terms of, you know, organizations and the ways we are. And on the other hand, to be well with emotion and our humanity as that arises. Because if we learn how to be well with what arises, like that's the thing that the world needs the most right now. And so if we can be a community of practice for that, fully expecting not to succeed, but instead just sort of leaning into it and living and growing, it feels that that would be valuable. And by the nature of engaging a diverse group of people and initiatives, it seems like a good practice ground. It seems like a myth where we're not to try to make something of that. Thank you so much, Kim. I appreciate that. Stacy and uh, Stacy and Eric, I'm going to try to save the last 10 minutes at 1.50 here um, for um, a little feedback exercise. But Stacy, did you have anything? Yes, I do. Um, earlier on a call, Pete talked about a container for wild, bold ideas, and I asked him where that container was. <laughs> Um, because speaking to what Kilu just spoke about and um, Lisa with this project, I, I have an idea for something that I think would be a container for all of these things and also weave in the values. And I'm wondering what people would think about the idea of a virtual concert fundraiser, like a virtual, like a, a meta ball where we're fundraising for this movement because I think, I mean, I won't go into the details now, but I have thought about it in detail and it allows for story threading. And, you know, if you think about some of the concerts that we've seen on TV, you see how they weave in stories and it gives people an opportunity to use their creativity. And as far as just, just being a viewer, you're participating. So to me, that's a real way to focus on inclusion and everybody gets to do it in their own way. And if, if anybody's interested, I would love to have a call to have that as a project. Stacy, just to, I, I love when things come up in multiple directions. Um, when I was in San Francisco, the uh, uh, former CEO of the X Prize brought up that same thing. And, and a group of people up there suggested that we do some kind of a virtual concert or event with some key stakeholders and um, create some some virtual spaces for that. So there's allies that are already moving on that. So I think we should pay attention to that. So I'd be delighted to be part of that call, Stacey. If I could just share one thing with you, I just want everybody to understand how nervous I am having said that and how difficult it was. <laughs> no, I'm not looking for applause. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I did it, but how many other people have so much to offer, but it's just too scary. So thank you for giving me the space to do that. I, yeah, thank I, support, you. I support Stacey as well. I, I really think um, having a big concert, right, is a way to rally focus, but also the key to having a successful concert is having clarity on what the movement is, right? Because people support different things. So it's really important to pinpoint right and and that the concert just shines a light right on it so it's a great way to create the movement and move the movement so I'll, i'm with you stacy i think lisa ma has the perfect skills for aiding that concert stacy I, I just want to reflect that um there was, there was multiple other people that brought that same idea up outside of these meetings and there was nothing happening on it because it's, it's kind of like there's a lot of ideas that brought up. So you having the courage to have that arise in yourself and speak, speak a crazy idea out. And it's funny when the crazy idea was also brought up by, you know, one or two other people in the same week, it's like, hmm, maybe we should 
pay attention to that crazy idea. But if you don't have the courage to speak it out, then nobody will know that everybody else is thinking it, right? And so I just want to celebrate that. I mean, that's that's like the pattern right there is is that's how I think we find we find these things. So thank you so much for uh, being brave in this space, Stacy. Okay, so um, I want to respect in it that there there may be people that need to get off here at the top of the hour. Um, so I want to save this this last period for a uh, a brief little breakout retro on what we can do better in this uh, coming cycle. Um, well, two things, two things I wanna save this last 10, 10 minutes for, and we'll do this in breakout rooms. One is that if anybody um, would like to make uh, the argument that we should disband our energy and, and that we're not headed in the right direction, I wanna open the space for that very explicitly. Um, and you can do that um, either here if you're comfortable. Um, or, or feel free to send me a note or engage a conversation or whatever. So anybody that doesn't feel like this is headed in the right direction, I wanna create space to speak that out um, here or elsewhere. Um, and then for those who feel that we should carry it forward, what can we do um, even better in this next six week cycle to create greater, greater clarity and greater value in the next six weeks than we were able to notice in this first six weeks? I think if we're able to get on a path of reflecting, you know, with each cycle and each six weeks, being able to notice and validate more like an increasing stream of value creation through each cycle, um, that's a pretty cool emergent property. So I'm going to um, split out break breakout rooms again, um, just for small group discussions on what we can do better. We have maybe uh, seven minutes to do that. We'll be able to uh, maybe six minutes come back to the group and uh, drop some, some of those things in the chat. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I'll create these breakout rooms and I will see you. And think about note taking if, if you want to. Yeah, it'd be great again, if someone could be a note taker and I'll recreate these rooms and see you back here soon.
Likewise. Hi, Jordan. So, hello, welcome back. All right, beautiful. Well, let's take, uh, let's just take a, a couple minutes here. Same thing, if we had any note takers in the room that can um, drop things into the chat, that would be wonderful. Um, I think that's with, with the amount of time remaining, just encourage you to um, get anything you want into the chat. So we've got it saved before you step out. Um, next week, we will be starting a new cycle. Um, We'll have hopefully a, a few more people coming into the room. One of the big realizations was that we have different people differing, engaging in different ways. So we've usually had you know, between 15 and 25 people on these Wednesday calls. Uh, many people have let me know that these times don't work, but they love to be engaged. We've got kind of a semi overlapping set engaged on Mattermost, and then a larger overlapping set engaged on email lists. And I'm realizing we're not going to all be able to engage in the same way, same time zones, um, et cetera. So that's one big thing that, um, that we're going to try to sort out for this next cycle. Um, we'll, we'll be aggregating and taking all these things in, and um, hopefully we can do a much better job in this, this next cycle. Um, so I hope to see you guys all next week. If anybody needs to go, please feel free. Kilo. You're, you're on mute still. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm curious, and it also spurs an idea for the next cycle. I'm curious, Jordan, how do you feel now that we're in week six? And, you know, whatever is happening in your world, and I'm also curious whether, since you do, even though you very much create the space for all of us to be supported and create, to create the substructure, you also are in the role of the leader and you are pulling and then pushing this. It would be interesting to kind of get the, get the snapshots of what's happening in Jordan and for Jordan and by Jordan and around that from you in some form. So I'm asking kind of two things. One is now in this point, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, and then also, you. is there value and is there a way to do it in an ongoing fashion in, in some manner or, or some version of that? Whether it's, you know, you or... or... The, the, second, the second question was some kind of ongoing uh, version of answering the question that you just asked to tie the threads together. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy to uh, answer now if that's useful and... Um, also happy to try to figure out how to do that on an ongoing basis. Yeah, one of, one of the realizations this last couple of weeks is I think there's a massive information asymmetry because I'm having a lot of conversations with different groups. Different small groups are having conversations with themselves and with different groups. So if you look at the amount of conversations that I'm in with different people or that Pete's in with different people or Kilo or Wendy or any Richie, any of these people are in all these different semi-overlapping conversations so there's, there's probably very few of us that have the whole picture of what's possible. And it was striking me how exciting it would be probably if we could all see what's possible. Um, so, so I think that's uh, something we really need to surface. But to answer your question quickly, um, I'm feeling a mix of um, like great excitement. And I feel like probably more happened in this first six week cycle than we could have expected. Um, it was kind of an experiment that that could have come together and we go, okay, I, I don't really think there's much here. Doesn't seem like there's anything that's really emergent. Let's disband and regroup. And um, there's, there's a lot of people who don't feel that way. Um, so that brings me, you know, tremendous joy. Um, there's also a lot of people that aren't on this call who are connected in peripheries that I think if we can get it structured right, there'll be like a sudden influx of energy. Um, and so that's really exciting too. Um, that makes me wrestle deeply with um, how to try to connect up the different circles that I see that could be connected up. And so I think over that, this next six weeks, that's really the big question. It's like, okay, how can we start to connect up all these different overlapping circles so that we can see what's possible? And I think there's a really good chance that at the end of this next six, six weeks, we can see that there's, you know, a hundred plus people that are all at least an in intention and spirit and in heart, like 
relatively aligned and ready to move together. And if we can finish articulating some of the clarity and principles and kind of rules of the game of how we can play together, um, I, I think we might be stunned with what's possible. So I'm feeling like I'm feeling really excited to to move into this next cycle. Um, I think probably the the question is, I kind of feel like if we can get the resources behind this and we had six to 12 months of um, runway to to let this emerge, like we would be blown away by where we are six or 12 months from now. Um, and I and I think that's still a question. That's the part that I haven't done. I've, I've done that at scale in business and in construction, um, but I've never done that in this kind of emergent um, space. And so that's probably my biggest question um, that I, I need to lean hard into. Um, but, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm optimistic. There's more here than I thought. Um, I, I think it's possible. Like I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if the people that I know are connected to this decided to move together, that everything else is possible, like without any hesitation and without, like, I know we could do it. And it's just kind of vulnerable here in the early stages to go, okay, can we get enough structure and context that we would decide to do it together? It's just a matter of like, will and i think if we decide to do it um everything else is possible so i guess that's that's my quick two minute summary of of uh my view it, it's absolutely and completely possible if we can figure out how to get people to decide to do it uh wendy and i i can hang on here i can i have some more um i left some bandwidth on the other time so if anybody needs to go look forward to seeing you this week and Otherwise we can keep chatting here a little bit, Wendy. Okay, so there's something here for me about a transition to welcoming more people and more voices, giving people uh, more autonomy than you get on a Zoom call. Yeah. Um, and also the ability for, and it's only present for me for a little while because I still have this Remo license and it's gonna time out in June, you know, not too far away. Um, I want us, as a group of people to have the experience of having choice about where we stand in the room and moving between rooms and the topics that we think we can contribute to. But importantly, to have that, um, and it could go with a little trial of Stacey's um, idea, because that would be a pleasure to be able to support her with that um, in some little fun way. Um, I think it's important as new people come to see where they fit. And thank you very much um for that Jonathan for that idea as in I don't know where I can fit and in a zoom call you can't fit yourself you have to be fitted by someone and there's something about that I deeply don't approve of and so um at least with something like Remo you can you can see where the conversations are you can drop into a conversation you can be greeted by someone who gives you the opportunity to say look you know, this is what my passion is. And that person say, well, I reckon just as a first conversation, you should go and meet this person there in that room. And we're not having meetings that way. We're having them as a, a, a screen share. I think we need to distribute the conversations a little bit and see what pops from an emergent perspective, particularly as we open out to new people and to see what new stories are possible when we enable other people's stories. It's that power under thing. How can I serve you if I don't know, and you don't know, or don't have the resources to find out how you can contribute? We need to, to work out how to do that. And I don't think Zoom is... Thank you, Wendy. You, you dropped, but are you, are you back? Can you hear? Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so, so thank you for bringing that in, acknowledging the... Um, the, the limitations we already hit with Zoom in the first cycle, um, acknowledging that there's um, potential creativity, connections, emergence that gets crushed by having this be the only place that people come together. Um, so we, we need to fix that. Um, maybe at the same time we, we discuss our, how we bring story weaving into the next six week cycle, um, we can discuss specifically the tools that you're advocating for and, and yeah. uh, that'd be great. So the proposal is that um, between now and next Thursday, um, we have at least a couple of people who are prepared to um, give that a go. It's not technically difficult. I've used that platform before um, and I'm not sure which groups because 
you know, that this time of day is a little bit contested, as you've said. Um, Pete and I had a play um, last year with this platform, but we didn't have. Uh, Wendy, you're. you're your audio is not coming through anymore. Yeah, we didn't have the opportunity to test it with a group of people because that wasn't the conversation we were having at the time. Now we okay, do. Great. And um, I just need to know who else has got the energy for doing it. Um, and Pete, you had a, an idea about how we might do it. But you know, we can't move you lose too many of the weeks and time that we have at the moment, because then we won't be able to do it for free, we can pay for it. But I'd rather us not pay for it just yet. Okay, great. I, I have, uh, just to count myself in, I have energy to work with, with you and a couple others to experiment on how to loose the bounds of Zoom before we start the next cycle. I, so, may, have and, a, I may have a solution here. Uh, I, I'm okay, in agreement with uh, Wendy. You know, I think it's really important to have meaningful, connected conversations, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, right, three, three on three, four on four, so forth, uh, based on, you know, the larger group when we come together to meet. Uh, I'm planning actually to to launch my Peace Cafe app this Friday. And the idea is that is imagine as a virtual Peace Cafe, right, where anyone can drop in for a conversation. And so, and it's free. <laughs> so, uh, so you, you, you know, so that we, you can have the ideas because there's a lot of amazing conversations that happens here, but then, right, it has to, the threat has to weave out and for it to reemerge when, you know, to create the tapestry when you reconvene, right? Mm -hmm. so then it becomes richer. So I, I think there, there is important, you know, to have these spaces. So yeah, so virtual coffees, I call them. You just come together. Yeah. So coffees. that is the That's direction, great. that is the general direction. Um, but at the moment, the, the opportunity that I have is to, to at least have a larger event. Um, well, we could have up to 100 people, but we're not going to go that big where people have the choice and then we'll have the two models, what it is that you're doing and this one where you can have a, a sort of more gallery sort of event. But in between, you know, at least um, the opportunity to host conversations that are a little bit more flexible in their nature. Right. So anyway, um, I just need a group of people. Pete, what do I need? <laughs> What's feasible between now and next Thursday? Not because we need to show that this could work or at least give give some feedback rather than risk what we've got and not give people a good experience um ask for people to put their name in the in the chat and then Thank you probably you. want to post on mattermost as well okay so i need some people and obviously we need to do when to meet and such to make that work okay beautiful so um and so lisa um yeah um, i'll also invite yeah. you to drop your um when you launch your peace cafe app please feel free to drop that into the the matter most and stuff too and uh so yeah cool. so we're actually having I'm, I'm actually hosting a virtual coffee this um this friday to uh, it's kind of like it's to launch how it works in a way it's about creating all kinds of events right where you can break out as well as you have one-on-one -on -one. so that's the idea it's all based on any event and it's open for anybody to host any events also beautiful so, love it so. Can't wait to can't wait to see what you've created. Thank you so much. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Eric. Um, so I had an insight in the call of the map readers today, where I made a difference between the needs and the strategies, and I would like to focus on both. But I I would like to have more time for needs, and to really clarify the needs before jumping to solutions. Yeah. Um, that was an insight for me, which was profound because I can notice it in a lot of different calls that this happens, that someone has an idea, then somebody else builds on that and maybe gives a solution and then there's another solution to, or a counter problem and then a, a solution to the counter problem. But we didn't actually really, to start off with, take enough time for the need, the fundamental need that's there and really clarify what is that need? Why is it there? And to really understand it before jumping to solutions. Um, yeah. And then a uh, second part is that I, I pushed for this uh, issue tracker thing. I think it's absolutely essential to get a bigger picture also, also of the needs. And um, that I, I wonder if people really have a clear image, just as you are part of all the groups, you get a clear image in your head kind of, but maybe it's a very busy image, not a stable image, but you've got a 
much better sense of what's there. Um, and this overview building and bigger picture building, I would really love to go into there so we can start translating what's there. Uh, and it's a, it's like, it's kind of copywriting and, and making it concise and in simple and clear language as well, I would say, to make people yeah. then understand what, where we are at as a, as a, as a whole. Um, and, and then I think the last thing I want to say is an example of what, um, uh, what Vincent is doing is, uh, this kind of interoperability that means there's so many platforms already out there and they're all trying their own thing, how to connect them up to each other. And that's a very high level, very difficult issue. And he's really working on it. And I think he's got a great capacity of working on it. And that's an example of what is this meta project actually about? It's like connecting all the already existing platforms and making them communicate to yeah, each other yeah. so they can share their knowledge. And that's, that, that's an example of very concrete. I think it's my last point as well. It's this big picture building. What is this really what we're doing and how to explain it to others so they can actually understand. So that someone who's not tech savvy can understand what we're doing and why it makes sense, why it has meaning. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so you brought up like four things that we're getting plus ones. Um, so one is, and it, it, we started the issue tracker alongside that getting clarity on needs so that we're, we're really clear about the solutions that we're developing. And so as we connect more groups and listening to that field and really getting clear on what's needed, how to prioritize those needs, what are, what are the sequence and leading dominoes as we're starting to build solutions um, is really critical. Then you brought up the bigger, the bigger picture building and how to, how to help people see. Um, so if, if anybody's interested in trying to help me with that, I'd be delighted to maybe work with a couple of people from Matt Weavers or whatever, I think, um, to do my best to, to start on that um, and we can see how far we can get. Uh, that, that, that would add also to it, uh, me and Pete Kaminsky working on the starting page. I think it's the same kind of work in a way uh, because it will lead into building that starting page as well. Okay, great. And, and so maybe um, yeah, Jonathan, I think, is interested in helping there. I think Wendy, Wendy McLean is, is okay. Um, great. So, so we have a little subset that we could, we could, work on big picture mapping and then i think if we can tie those also to start page and then okay then the, the other thing you brought is how to explain that to people so i think getting a picture of the big picture and getting that all out is a very different task than how to simplify and explain it to people progressively um so that's where you know michael grossman and others i think we need to because because that's going to be the more we get out the more complex it's going to get in a strange way and so it could get almost more com confusing. And so I, then I think we need to have a team working on the simplification and messaging so people can wade into the shallow end and get deeper as they joyfully want to. Um, so that's kind of like a messaging, messaging and branding communications type function, which we don't have up yet. Okay. Great, great multi-level insights. Um, Stacy. Yeah, so on a very meta level involving big picture, I agree with Eric. I would like to know what the needs are, but then with this idea of a fundraiser concert, I'd like to see if we could brainstorm how we could work serving those needs, like build that in. For example, there might be a group that's particularly focused on getting communities involved to watch together, you know, something like that. It could be different groups, but if we had what all the needs were for like a perfect utopian world and we could look at it that way, I, I just think it would be an interesting thing to do to just come up with all different kinds of ideas that would lead to creating profiles, stories, um, 
I don't know. It's just every, everything in a bucket, but knowing the needs, then we could look to see how do we connect. Does that make, I mean, I'm not articulating it well, but. For sure, yeah. Yeah, Un understood completely, Stacey. There's a huge opportunity too, as we start understanding the needs and the capabilities. Um, I'm really interested in how we start pack, just like you're saying, Stacey, but we can package a whole bunch of those needs up, couple them to solutions and be presenting those out to people that would want to fund the solutions to the most pressing needs. And that's kind of, that's just what we do in construction, bringing together different solutions to, to solve a set. Um, so I think that we could practice just like you're saying, and then we can grow that over time. Um, so that, that's a really, I think, great lens to look at it through. I'm just wondering if we couldn't have a call with, like you mentioned, other people have said the same thing. I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be worthwhile to just have a call, just throwing out different ideas of what activities would be involved in forming, so, you know, in, in creating something like that, bringing yeah. us together. Yeah. <laughs> Regarding the other needs, group, right? there's, sorry, Eric, sorry. go ahead. No, go for it, go for it. Oh, regarding needs, uh, I've been thinking about it for, I don't know, a decade. Um, one of the things that can be harvested from a starting point of needs is um, describing the solutions in such a way that that description becomes part of the knowledge base of what we're building so that later people can go, well, well what did we do? And what's built? And what was the need that inspired it? Um, most projects don't create a knowledge base. And I think that's um, an important lost value. That yeah. you know, all we have to do is, is kind of be conscious that what we're doing now, people are gonna wanna know about later. Yeah, great. One other thing that came up in, uh, well, I don't remember the woman's name. Her last name was Shade, Janice? Janice, Janice, yeah. Okay, and with Hank, and again, it goes to the fundraising thing. The idea of taking the money out of the equation at first to be able to more clearly see what's being created. Like what would happen if it turned out we didn't need to depend on other people for fundraising because we're fundraising, like we're doing it by paying to go to this event. Just, just as an example, I, I just think it might be useful to at least approach the task as if we didn't need money, just yeah. to see. Yeah, it's, it's, such a, it's such a critical perspective, Stacey. I've been wrestling with that too, because it's almost like you, you don't want, if those of us who are committed could somehow decouple our path where, where it's like any external resources become a wonderful bonus, but we're, we're kind of building from what, what's within, you, you take the role of external determinants out in, in an interesting way. So that's a great lens to play with a little bit. Well, if no one else is saying something, let me just uh, say how much I, I agree with that reversal that uh, both Stacy and Jonathan talked about. Uh, instead of trying to describe the needs, just describe the solutions in such a way that we can afterwards say, hey, look what we built. Uh, what did we need that for? And then there'll be hundreds of things in the knowledge base and in the maps that uh, 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 Wendy and, and Pete are making that the solutions will fit. And as Stacy was saying, take, take the money out of the equation and, and doing it as if we're doing it because it has to be done. And then afterwards, 
finding out that because it had to be done, there'll be people who are ready to pay for it afterwards in case there's money needed for it. I, I really think those are very important value-driven uh, value driven ways of working. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Hank, that's, it, it's funny that that's like been, I mentioned this on this last call, but that, that's been the entire lens that I go through from a contracting lens is it's like there, there's a need, you respond to it, you go create value for a month and then you basically project like what you did, what it accomplished, why it was needed and how it moved towards the goal. And then the owner of the project will happily pay for it because it's, it, it's advancing. And so it's a really interesting lens. And I, and I think to tie it back to Kilo's opening reflection on how we notice value as we create it and how it, as it arises, then we need to be able to kind of submit that out and show what we did. At, and that becomes kind of a different process. So that's, that's a really interesting lens. Yeah, let, let, let me second that as well. I've discovered that throughout 30 years of working, I've never ever done any kind of marketing. I always go to, to conferences or at the coffee bar of a meeting and tell people what I'm enthusiastic about. And because I'm enthusiastic about maybe a month or a, two months or a half a year later, they'll call me up and say, hey, remember what you were talking about a half a year ago? Are you still doing that? I'd like to do it with you. And that's, on a, of course, a micro scale, and this is more on a macro scale, but it's yeah. always been something that I found, certainly working in, in European contexts, that works yeah. very well. Yeah. That's exactly, yeah, that communication. It's like, yeah, doing what needs to be done out of passion and then being able to present that out in, the, in a really wise way. So it feels like we might be kind of coming close to wrapping up here. Um, so maybe take another five minutes or so and break at the half hour. Anybody else have anything that's alive here? Really looking forward to come to processing the, the notes and chat from today. Pete, I'm curious, uh, any ties that are floating in your mind? <laughs> uh, nope. Nope, perfect. Do you, want, do you guys want some more music? <laughs> we can have okay. some music, we can have some music as we continue the dialogue here. Yeah. <laughs> I need to uh, share my screen then because then I can add the audio or um, so it's a bit I hope I can I don't know if I can actually do it this no I don't know can you see the chat window still I guess well here we go if it doesn't work let me know <laughs> um, Michael are you are you on by chance Tell me if it's too loud as well. Michael Grossman, are you, are you able to chat with us or are you just listening? Yes, yes I, I'm here. Do you have any, um, in, the, in this next stage, you know, we're moving towards the next round of engagement and, and figuring that out. Do you have any thoughts or things coming through on, on how we wisely work on that messaging and um, I guess the external communications. Yeah, yeah um, I, I mean, I, with, without being like too prescriptive, because I, I think there are things to hear from from everybody about, um, you know, what what the stages are of our activity. I, I do think that. Um, identifying for people from, you know, from a concert audience to a, um, to somebody who's happening across, um, something we communicate 
individually or or as a group. Um, uh, some some value sharing. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to go back again to that you know power under notion of like. Do you see these things in this nascent movement? I think Kilu sort of um, distilled what I was saying in a note she sent last time about um, about uh, you know that there is a movement here already. We're not creating one. We're recognizing all the components of it that do exist, and so um, from a from a kind of simplicity and branding standpoint. If you can say, hey, see this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing, do, those, do you get how they relate to each other and how they're important in, in this, this, um, this global change that we are undergoing? Okay, then, then you're part of it too. Um, so it, it, it's less about um, telling, well, not that it isn't about telling a story, but it's about recognizing um, an urge that hasn't been named, that we're all feeling, and that we can recognize when we see it. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's uh, my that's, thought, and love to really talk good. about it more. Yeah, and thanks. Uh, yeah, Wendy, thanks for offering to help with that. Um, yeah, I think that that's such a more powerful standpoint. It it's like in, I like what you said. Instead of telling, you know, helping people recognize. Bill Larson talks a lot about those those profound questions that help people recognize or come to conclusions that are are wanting to be there that that we haven't felt. So, uh, and I think Wendy Elford's storytelling theme. Um, really ties into this too. It's like, is this emerging, helping people see their own stories reflected in what some of us are trying to do together and recognizing they're part of that same impulse and that we want to help each other. Great lens. Sure. There's a, I think that's you, Eric. What's your yeah. name? It's me. It's yeah, live could... accompaniment to uh, to the conversation. <laughs> well, all I hear is the hiss. So. Ah, really? Yeah, yes. the music's not not really. Uh, ah, it's not coming through. through. Okay. In that <laughs> case, thank you for letting me know. Does anybody uh, else anybody else have anything alive that you'd like to get out into the field? <clears throat> Um, weak signals. Jordan, um, I have one uh, crazy idea. If uh, yeah. crazy ideas are acceptable in this creative group. Love Bill Larson's crazy Let's ideas. Let's say that somebody had made something or written something that was, um, you know, being published and they wanted to um, put it into an auction space with the idea that they split the they split the revenue with whatever is going to be the implementation of this project in a way that can help the most people to kind of build the foundation. And so we had a big meeting instead of just a concert, we could have something alongside it where uh, writings, handcrafted products, you know, I'm making these talking sticks that are going to sell along with my book. That's just an example. We could throw it in and then split the revenue with uh, whatever project, you know, like it could be a fiscally sponsored thing or whatever, and just create kind of a buzz, kind of like crowdfunding, but with something of value from whoever produces that thing within the group. I'm sure there's a tremendous amount of stuff. I mean, you could even put one of your writings in an EFT and sell it in something like that. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. I was going to say just to just to have a call to brainstorm all those kind of ideas, because that's how I see it. Like like the tricky trays, the silent auctions, 
Um, you know, even what, you know, companies could donate in terms of goods that you can give out as like prizes. And I see this as making it at an event we want to go to. So I don't know how many people you have energized, but if just the people involved paid their yeah. 20 bucks to get in or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, I I love the, the, the silent auction things and I have lots of ideas for gambling kind of stuff and yeah. Love I love that. that challenge, make an event we want to go to. And it ties in with, yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting uh, concept. Well, let's get it. Let's get a call to discuss. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I love it. You could maybe shoot out a, a wind to meet or something. Jonathan, thank you. Much love, everybody. Wonderful call today. Uh, great to spend some time kind of reflecting. Um, I think this next six weeks will be different than the six weeks that brought us here, hopefully in some wonderfully positive ways because we make it so and uh really really grateful so thank you so much much love we'll we'll see you guys soon